All right, in this video, we're going to talk about vectors in two dimensions or vectors in the plane. And uh, this goes on with section 2.1. Now we're gonna try to describe what vectors are, do some vector arithmetic and define unit vectors. So the first way you wanna think about vectors is that they have a fixed length and a fixed direction. So two aspects of them. We often represent them by arrows. Uh, obviously the arrow points in the direction and then the length of the arrow is the magnitude of the vector. Now you can move it around and it can still be the same vector. Uh, you see these vectors V1 through V5 are all the same because they're all the same length and they're all pointing in the same direction. Uh, the initial point is where the vector starts and then it's drawn to the terminal point. So the terminal point is the end with the arrowhead. So uh, looking at these two vectors, are they equivalent? Yes, they are, since they are pointing in the same direction and they are the same length. What about these two vectors? Well, they are not, even though they are the same length, they're pointing in different directions. So you need same magnitude or length and same direction to be the same vector. Uh, now we can represent them as arrows and uh, you'll see it uh, that lowercase letters of the alphabet are often used to represent the different vectors, V and W especially are popular choices. Uh, some textbooks will just use a bold font on the letter to represent it. Of course, when you're writing by hand, uh, bold font is sometimes hard to get across. And so you'll sometimes see in handwritten notation, a little arrow on top indicating that it's a vector. Uh, now you can define a vector by its initial point and terminal point. For points, we usually use capital letters uh, like P and Q. Uh, and so the vector from P to Q would be denoted with PQ with the arrow on top like that. Now we can define a vector by its components. And what these are, are the coordinates of the terminal point if the initial point is at the origin. Consider this vector V, it goes from the origin to the point six, eight. And we could represent it uh, as six, eight in the sort of vertical column vector notation with the square brackets, um, or you'll see in the horizontal kind of row vector with these greater than less than bracket symbols as well. Uh, and then sometimes people will use parentheses, though this is obviously not great notation because it could be confused with the point itself. Notice we move the vectors, initial point and terminal points, the same amount. Uh, it's still the same vector because it's the same length and same direction. Now you can think of every vector as the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Uh, and so the vector has components uh, that re are represented by the legs of the right triangle, horizontal component and a vertical component. The length or magnitude of the vector uh, is denoted by these double absolute value bars. Uh, and it's also sometimes called the norm of the vector. The magnitude of the vector is uh, given in terms of the components uh, according to the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, take a minute to find the magnitude of vector A uh, in component form seven, first component one, second component. You can pause the video if you need some time. And the correct answer is D, square root of 50. We can also, from the magnitude of the vector and the angle uh, of the vector in standard position, determine the components of the vector just using right triangle trigonometry. So magnitude times sine is the vertical component and magnitude times cosine is the horizontal. You could do that to find the components of this vector right here that has magnitude four and is uh, negative 45 degrees from reference angle zero. Again, pause the recording if you need to on these problems. Uh, and you find that X and Y are both square root of eight. Now we can multiply a vector by a scalar, uh, like two or one half or negative one. And what that does is changes the length of the vector. Uh, if you multiply the vector by two, it gets twice as long. By one half, it's one half as long. Notice it's pointing in the same direction. Now, if you multiply by a negative, it will point in the opposite direction, though we think of the direction of a vector as being an infinite line going in both directions. And so in some sense, this is the same direction. It's on the same line. 
Uh, you when you actually work with a vector in component form, multiplying by a scalar is easy. You just multiply each component by that scalar. So three times v, you just multiply each component by three, and you get the new vector. Now, I mentioned unit vectors is one of our objectives. A unit vector is a vector pointing in the same direction, but has a magnitude of one. This is a way to separate the direction part of the vector from the magnitude part and just focus on the direction. Uh, so uh, the notation for this is, uh, there's two ways. Some people will just use u uh, for u uh, as the first letter of unit. Um, but sometimes we have multiple vectors and we want the unit vector for all of them. And then we'll use this little hat notation. Um, and so v hat is the unit vector that goes along with v. So you'll see both of those, u being the unit vector for some vector of a different letter, and then v hat uh, for v or, or w hat for w, you know, the same letter, but with a hat instead of an arrow. Uh, and the way you calculate it is you find the magnitude of the vector or its length, and then you do multiply by the reciprocal of that. And this is equivalent to dividing. Uh, and what this does is makes that evenly divides each component by that magnitude. Um, so it ends up having a magnitude of one and uh, is pointing in the same direction. So uh, say we had vector first component one, second component two, we could find the unit vector by first finding the magnitude, which we said before is the square root of the sum of the squares say square root of five, uh, and then dividing each component by square root of five. Uh, so we get the unit vector for V is one over square root of five and two over square root of five. Now the unit vectors pointing in the positive X and positive Y directions are special vectors, sometimes referred to as basis vectors, and there's special symbols used for them. I is the one that points in the x direction, j in the y direction. Later on, we have three dimensions. We'll have k pointing in the z direction. This gives us another way to represent a vector in component form. Instead of writing the components inside brackets, uh, we can write the components in front of i and j. So first component times i and second component times j. And on to vector addition. So when we add two vectors, Geometrically, what we're doing is drawing them head to tail. So draw the first vector and then start at the terminal point of the first vector and make that the initial point of the second vector. Uh, and then to find the sum, just start at the very beginning and draw a vector to the very end. So here, see here the sum of V plus W. Uh, and you notice that it is commutative. So you can do V plus W is equal to W plus V. Uh, and this sort of gives a parallelogram uh, where the sum is the diagonal. If you're actually working with component forms of the vectors, you just add the components uh, separately. So uh, adding the first components here, six and negative two is four, and adding the second components, eight and four is 12. Uh, a subtraction, like with scalars, is technically defined in terms of adding a negative. And so if I wanted to do V minus W, I could think of first drawing V and then uh, negative W, which we talked about before is the same as W, uh, but pointed in the opposite direction. So V plus negative W gives you V minus W. All right, putting all that together, here's one last problem for you to try out. Uh, given that A is seven, one, and B has initial point three, two and terminal point negative one, negative one, uh, find three A minus four B. Go ahead and pause this, take a few minutes to find the answer to that, and then unpause when you're ready. All right, so you should have gotten that the answer is B, uh, first component 37, second component 15. And the last slide here, I got a couple links to some simulations where you can kind of play around with uh, vectors in two dimensions and vector addition. Um, so you should have a link to these slides and be able to click on these links there. You won't be able to click from this recording, of course. Uh, and then that's it until we get to the methodology.